Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking Glen Barna Normal Mechanics from an Archer's perspective. Let's jump right in. When you first enter Glen, you will need to select who goes to day side and who goes to night side. Each side must have the same number of players. I highly suggest using Harmonic Saint, Battlefield Overture, Voice of Vitality, Protection Cater, and Echoes of Salvation now while the whole party is together. Other things to keep an eye on are Power Potion, Magic Power Potion, Golden Wool, Protection and Defense Buff Potion, Move Speed Potion, and Phoenix's Flames of Resurrection, and other buff effect durations to make sure they're all up now before we start heavy combat. Once the buff spawns, the party is tasked with getting it to 95% HP. From this point forward, the two sides are separated. You'll see your pair's icon on the ground with their respective day and night symbol and a beam of light. The first thing you should do in this room, and every room, is Divine Link your pet. As an archer, always bring campfire kits or firewood. Using a bow next to a campfire increases your final damage by 50%, which is a massive boost. You can also use the campfire itself as an obstacle for mob pathing to give yourself a little breathing room. I actually placed my campfire incorrectly here. Since recording this, I've found that placing the campfire near the barriers in the next area in every room gives you the best viewpoint for archers using this technique. The first mob that spawns in each room is a deer. One side must kill the deer for the dungeon to begin. Each player that lands the final blow on a deer is given a firewood or ember, which can be seen as the number next to your health pool in the top left. This will come up la again later, so keep this in mind. In the first room, players are tasked with killing a mobs on either side to fill a shared bar to correct the paradox. You can see the bar at the bottom center of your screen. Once the mobs are killed, the barrier to the next room is released. When a player dies, their shared health with their partner is reduced by their maximum HP. When this reaches zero, these players can no longer be revived. If you die a lot, it's best to stay dead and wait for the room to finish so you don't continue to bring down your shared pool with frequent deaths. As you kill mobs, the shared health can sometimes refill. Survival is the most important thing in this dungeon. Aside from instant kill mechanics, Phoenix Flames of Resurrection revives do not reduce shared health like normal deaths, so be sure to use them if you have them as a safety net. Defiance Technique card is also great here. As you can see, I immediately move to the next barrier and place my campfire to boost my damage before the second room begins. I ran the dungeon twice to show both day and night side, so we'll be alternating perspectives here. In this room, each side has their own paradox bar to fill. Only mobs that have the day and night symbol over their head count towards clearing the paradox. The plant enemies specifically can only be damaged if both sides coordinate as they will take reduced damage from subsequent attack from the same side, and also from the same damage type. Basically, if night side hits a plant, it can then take more damage from day side, and vice versa. There's no other gimmicks in this room, just kill all the mobs with the symbol over their head and continue on. The wolf type enemies will sometimes grab you and reduce your shared life total. You'll need to rapidly press left and right arrow keys to escape their grasp. As an archer, it's best not to let any of these near you. After the barrier breaks, I again run to the next barrier and place a campfire. Always check your divine link at the start of a room. Now's a good time to use golden wool for a bit of extra protection as they only last a minute. This brings us to the mechanic and face heavy third room. In this first phase, you will face yetis. I mean, rabbits. Sure, I guess. These rabbits are extremely strong and grow increasingly resistant to damage types as they are hit. Speaking of, they are highly resistant to melee damage from the jump. It's best to kill them with archery, EK, or magic. It's also best to avoid multi-hit abilities like Kunai Storm, Bullet Storm, Act 2, and other abilities of similar caliber, though their AI can be stunned with Act 2. You want to kill them in as few hits as possible. To clear this phase, each side must kill four rabbits. Uh, once you've finished killing your four rabbits on your side, you can just wait out the rest of the room until the other side finishes. After some time, the wraith will spawn. So be careful once your divine link is gone. Shortly after the wraith, a blizzard usually starts. During the blizzard, it is imperative that everyone run to their partner symbol using shadow cloak. Failing to be close to your partner symbol will result in your shared life total being reduced by the blizzard. It's also best to avoid all fighting during the blizzard as all mobs get crazy strong. The blizzard only lasts 10 seconds, so as long as you have rank one shadow cloak and rank one crisis escape, you have plenty of time to stay hidden. If you get knocked out of Shadow Cloak, be sure to use Crisis Escape and let your partner come to you. After clearing all four rabbits on both sides, the embers and firewood become important again. Starting on night side, a brazier will appear. The players with embers must take turns burning their ember. They must stand within the circle around the brazier to keep it lit. 
Once it is lit, it will appear on day side, and the player on day side must take turns burning firewood by standing next to the brazier until the bar at the bottom of the screen and completely fills. If either player is knocked away from the brazier, this fails and will need to be attempted again. This repeats until no player has embers or no player has firewood. Remember how only one side needs to kill the deer to start the dungeon? You can skip this mechanic completely by letting all the deer live on either day side or night side. The barrier becomes stronger if you skip this, but that's not a big deal. It just takes a few more hits to clear. After clearing or skipping the ember and firewood mechanic, we now have to destroy the barrier to enter the boss room. One side will be tasked with damaging the barrier, but it will not take damage immediately. On the other side, four braziers will spawn. Once the first brazier is destroyed, the other three need to be destroyed within 30 seconds. Once this is completed, a hard to see red circle appears in the center of the room. The player must remain in the center of that circle to allow the barrier on the other side to take damage. This mechanic then repeats on the opposite side. Once both sides have finished this and killed a portion of the barrier, both teams can attack the barrier one last time. After the barrier is destroyed, the players are teleported to the boss room, separated by a barrier. In the boss room, we get a short breather where we can restart buffs and effects. Buffs and things like Tree of Renewal work through the barrier to help the rest of the party. When the party is ready, everyone enters the giant circles with the day and night symbols to spawn the bosses. The bosses share the same health, despite showing two separate health bars. First we'll cover day side. The golem is the easier of the two to fight, because you don't need to fight it. You can hide behind the rocks and then wait for it to load and hold Ice Spear for about 6 seconds for it to glitch out the AI and to not attacking for the rest of the fight. This area is also generally safe from the other mobs and golems that spawn for the rest of the fight. The witch on the night side has several attack patterns that it will perform randomly. There's an X pattern attack that can be in any random direction, a cone shaped breath attack, and a charged circular attack that hits twice, once near it and then once further away. Most of these have indicators. At 90% HP, the bosses will spawn adds, including raids, and a deer. And a counter of souls appears on the top right of the screen. If the counter reaches 30 out of 30, all players will be killed. The deer will randomly appear on either night side or day side. Killing the deer creates a portal. On the other side of the portal is a realm where souls appear and can be killed. Every soul killed reduces the count by one. Remember, at any time, party healing can be used to heal players in a different area. When the bosses reach 70% HP, the red light will appear on one of the players fighting the golem and the witch. After a short duration, this player will explode. This player needs to run directly next to the boss and explode on top of them. The explosion does quite a bit of damage, so it's recommended that a saint use blessing and protection to prevent the explosion from damaging the player. If the player doesn't explode close enough to the bosses, there will be a series of explosions that occur after the boss reaches 65% HP. Speaking of, at 65% HP, a message will appear in the Shadow Realm that souls are being absorbed. The player inside must exit before the souls are absorbed, or else the player will be absorbed with the souls. By this, I mean they die. You gon' die. Remember to leave. This phase repeats at 50%, and the red light happens at 30%, and the souls are absorbed at 25%. At 10% HP, the golem boss will disappear, the barrier separating the teams will release, and the player closest to the witch will be taken to another shadow realm. The witch will rewind its health to 20% HP. Every time the witch's HP gets to 10% after this, it will repeat the process, sending another player that's closest to it to the shadow realm, and returning to 20% HP. The players in the shadow realm face a final foe surrounded by deer. Once the enemy in the center is defeated, we're done. This is where normal difficulty ends, and everyone gets their reward chest. Glen Berna has a clear limit of three times per week, which resets on Saturday. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.